Hey everyone, Mike Burke here with InsideRealEstatePhotography.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to create and use proxy files in Adobe Premiere Pro to greatly speed up your editing workflow. So if you've ever been editing video clips and your computer's struggling to play them back or it's getting choked up every five seconds, then you know what a frustrating experience that can be. If you're working with high resolution 4K files on an older computer, for instance, then you probably know what I'm talking about. Even newer computers may even struggle with some of these new modern video file types. This is where proxy files come into play. So what is a proxy file? If you're unfamiliar, a proxy file is essentially just a low resolution copy of your high resolution file that you use to edit with so it's easy on your computer. When you're finished editing and you're ready to export, Premiere will automatically swap in your high resolution files so your final outputted file will be in full resolution. Proxies have become an essential part of my editing workflow and I honestly don't know what I would do without them. They make my life so much less frustrating and they make editing a breeze. I'm editing on this 2016 MacBook Pro which has been a pretty great computer but I definitely need proxies to be able to edit most 4K files. I'm patiently awaiting for the new 16 inch MacBook Pros coming out this fall and I'll definitely be ordering one immediately as this computer is starting to show its age. Hopefully I won't need proxies as much on that new computer, but I'm sure I'll still need them for certain types of files. All right, now let's jump into Premiere and I'll show you how I go about creating my proxy files for editing real estate videos. All right guys, so here we are in Premiere. I have imported three clips into this project. They're 120 frames per second, 4K clips from my Sony a7S III. These are enormously high bitrate files. Watch if I put it in the timeline here and try to play it back. It's just, it's not even doing any, it's choking and <laughs> it can, can't handle it. I mean, I doubt even a brand new computer, or most brand new computers probably can't even handle these files. So again, this is why we need proxies. Uh, otherwise you'd never be able to edit this. Um, so I'm just gonna delete this for a second. So what you could do is just come over here and highlight your clips and then go to control click or right click on them and go to proxies, create proxies. And you have these presets here. This is one I created, but there's these other ones here that come with Premiere. I like to create my own preset though and make it as light as possible. So we're gonna go that route and I'm gonna show you how to create a preset, a really light weight preset and really make your files rip. So what you'll need to do is you'll have to have Media Encoder open and then we're gonna go up to this preset browser and I'm just gonna hit the plus button here. Create, and we're gonna have to first create an encoding preset and then create an ingest preset. So I'm going to create encoding preset. So we can just call this 4K proxy preset or whatever you want to call it. Format, we want H.264. And now video, we want it to be 640 by 360, which is just basically like 360p, <laughs> which is like super low resolution. And now down here at bitrate settings, I'm gonna put the bitrate all the way down to one, which is a really low bit rate, VBR one pass. Again, this is just gonna make a low resolution file that's super light, super small, and super fast. And the other thing I like to do here is if you go to effects, and if you go down to name overlay, we're gonna click that on, and we could just have source file name and then suffix, I just put in underscore proxy, and we have the bottom center, and then size is eight, opacity 50. Then I have a time code overlay here. I click that on top center, size eight, opacity 50. And what that does is just overlays text on your proxy file. So you know you're working with a proxy file. It removes any shadow of a doubt that you are indeed using a proxy file and not your high resolution file because sometimes that can be confusing. I will clarify this in a moment once we get back into Premiere. So I'm just gonna hit okay. And now we have our 4K proxy preset in here. So now I wanna go back up to the plus again, and I'm gonna go create ingest preset. So again, I'm gonna call this 4K proxy preset. And then down here, transcode files to destination. Destination is my desktop right now, but it doesn't really matter because we're gonna change this for every project that we work on. And I'm gonna show you that again in a minute. So format H format h.264 and then preset we want this based on our preset that we just created so 4k proxy preset we want to select that and then we just hit ok so now we have our ingest preset in here as well so now with our ingest preset highlighted i'm going to go to export preset here 
and 4K proxy presets. You can just choose a folder on your document, say, and you know, create a new folder. You can call it Premiere Presets. Just create. I'm going to save it in here and I'll just hit save. Now back in Premiere, if you highlight your clips and hit control or right click on them, go to proxy, create proxies. Now here in our presets, we want to, you know, import this preset here. So we want to go to add ingest preset. If we go to our documents and go to that folder we just created, Premiere presets and select our 4K proxy preset, open. So now here we go, we have it in our create proxies dialog box here and we can select it and it'll be there always when we go to do this. But before we do that, there's a few other things we need to address. So our clips are in 120 frames per second and so is our sequence and we don't want that. We wanna be editing on a 24 frames per second timeline with 24 frames per second interpreted clips. So they're in slow motion. Most of us are working in slow motion for real estate videos. So what I'm gonna do is just control click or right click on the sequence. I'm gonna to go to sequence settings and I want my time base to be 23.976. And I usually edit in 1920 by 1080. So I'm gonna hit okay. So now my timeline, now you can see is in 24 frames per second, 1920 by 1080. But I still have my clips here in 120 frames per second. So what I'm gonna do is just highlight these clips. I'm gonna again, control click on them, right click, modify, interpret footage. I'm gonna go to assume this frame rate, 23.9. Seven six, and we hit OK. So now our clips are interpreted to be 24 frames per second, so they are in slow motion. But these are still the full resolution clips that won't play on my timeline because they're too high resolution. So we need to make proxies out of these. And here's where things get a little tricky for us using slow motion. We need to do a little trickery here to convert them into proxies in the interpreted frame rate. So how I do this, I'm going to go to this first clip here and I'm just gonna go control click on it and go to duplicate. So the reason I do that is because once these clips go over to media encoder to become encoded into proxies, this first clip will automatically start rendering right off the bat and it'll be in 120 frames per second. So it won't be right. And the proxy won't line up with the actual high resolution file and you'll have problems. So this is kind of the workaround that I've come up with to deal with this problem. So when these files are done rendering, this first clip we're just not gonna use because it's not gonna be right. And we'll just use this copy of the same clip and it'll all be fine. So I'll show you that in a moment. So now we're just gonna select all these clips. Again, control click, right click. And I'm going to go to proxy, create proxies. Again, select our 4K proxy preset that we selected. And then you can go to browse and select where you want these proxies to be saved to. So if you go to desktop, I have my proxy tutorial folder. I'll just create a new folder and call it proxies. And I'll hit create. So now in my folder where my project is, I can save all my proxies in with the rest of the file. So I'll just select folder and then I will hit okay. It's saying creating proxy jobs. So if we go over to Media Encoder, we're gonna see these clips coming up here. So we wanna keep an eye on this. See, the first one started going already here, as you see. So I'm just gonna st hit stop. Just, would you like to finish the current file before the queue stops? No. So again, we're not gonna use this first clip. That's why it stopped. We're not even worried about it. We have the copy right here. So we'll all be all good once we get back into Premiere. So now we need to, again, interpret these clips into 24 frames per second inside Media Encoder so that the proxies are in the proper frame rate when we go to edit. I know this is all kind of crazy. I wish they made this a little bit better. This is kind of like a workaround. But again, just highlight them, control, right click, go to interpret footage. And we wanna assume the frame rate of 23.976. And we're gonna hit okay. So now these clips are interpreted in the correct frame rate. So we can even delete this first clip. And now we have our clips here and they're ready to go. So I'm just gonna hit the play button again and let these go. All right, so you can see our proxy files are now finished encoding. So if you go over to our folder here, you can see our proxies are now all in our proxy folder here. And just to give you an idea, like this is the original file here, 1.41 gigabytes. The proxy file for that is 597 kilobytes. <laughs> 
So it's just crazy how much smaller and how fast these will be, obviously. So if you look at this other clip, 738.4 megabytes. The proxy is 17 megabytes. And you can see this is the size of it now. And it's moving in slow motion, just how we need it to be. So this is exactly what we want. And you can see the text overlay here that we added in the effects panel before. And again, this is so we can tell that it's a proxy file that we're working with and not the original high resolution file. So there's no confusion. I'm gonna show you that right now. All right, so we're, again, we're not gonna use this first clip because it wasn't encoded properly. So I'm just gonna grab these three other clips here and bring them into our timeline. Keep existing settings. Again, this is a 1080 timeline, not a 4K one. So the clip is zoomed in here. So I would just have to go in here in effects and go to scale 50%. And I'll just copy that and paste that on their other clips. So now these are all, you know, the size they should be. Again, these are taking a minute to load up because these are the full resolution file still. All right, so how do we enable the proxies? So there's this little button here under the window called toggle proxies. This may not be in your window by default. So all you have to do is button editor here and you would find the toggle proxies button and just drag it down into this toolbar here. We already have it, so I don't need it, but you can drag any of these little things down in here if you wanna use them. So, okay. So now if I hit this button, boom. Now it's enabled the proxy file. That's why we did this text. So now I know that I'm working with proxy file here. There's no doubt about it. So if we didn't have this, yes, you can tell that it's, you know, not as good quality, but Sometimes, you know, it can get confusing. Is the proxy on or is it not on? So this just eliminates that confusion. So we know when this text is up that we are working with a proxy file. And now if I scrub this, you know, any, any of these clips here are all the proxies are enabled. And you know, if I try to play this, boom, plays back perfectly, no issues whatsoever. So now I can just go about editing these as I normally would, cutting and you know, whatever I need to do here and all will be well, all will go smoothly. And at the end, when I export, you don't need to, you don't even need to untoggle these proxies. It will just automatically render out in full resolution. You don't have to do anything. It's all just taken care of by Premiere. So you don't have to worry about turning this on or off and making sure that, you know, the, you know it's in the high resolution mode or whatever. So it, it, Premiere will just do that automatically. It just reattaches the original high resolution clip when it exports and you'll have the full resolution file. So one other thing I'd like to mention is when I go to do my color corrections at the end, I would just turn off the proxies, toggle them off and work with my full resolution. So after my you know timeline is all edited and it's where I want it to be, all my edits are good. I'll just turn it off to go do my color correction. So I'm working in full resolution. And I can see really with the colors and everything going on because I'm not playing the clip. So it doesn't matter that, you know, I, I can't see the motion of them because it's too high resolution. I, I can just bounce from one clip to the other make my corrections, brightness, color cast, whatever I'm dealing with here to correct. These are all uncorrected, just straight out of camera files. But that's how I would do my color correction at the end of uh, my editing process. And that's really it guys, that's proxies. And that's how I create proxies. That's the preset that I use, a really super low resolution preset that's super, super light and everything works fast and smooth. And it just makes your life so much easier when you're editing. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I really appreciate the support. I also wanna mention my private Discord group that I have via my Patreon page. You can check out the link in the description. It's really evolving into an awesome little community where we're discussing all things real estate photography. So if you're interested in that, please check that link out as well. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll catch you on the next one.